Hi there, my name is Pau, and today I want to talk about something that I have been pondering for most of my life. <laughs> and I know that sounds way more dramatic than the thing I am about to talk about, but, you know, it's true, and there you go. I've actually been thinking about this for a very long time. And that is the importance of signed books. <laughs> What I want to talk about is why signed books have a higher value than books that are not signed. This may seem like a no-brainer to a lot of you because an autograph is a special thing, right? I mean, I thought it was great when I was a little kid in Disney World, like four years old, going around filling up my autograph book with the characters, and yeah, it's just a bunch of people in, like, Pooh Bear suits, but it's like, look, I got Pooh Bear's autograph. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, books. Why are autographed books such a commodity? Why is this a special thing placed on a pedestal higher than just a regular book? I think about this all the time because for me, personally, I don't see anything special about a signed book that you can get from a, a bookstore. You know, sometimes bookstores will have autographed copies of a book that you can go and buy. But to me, the upcharge that they slap on that book does not... It's just not worth it. It's just not worth to spend more money on a book that has just been signed by the author that I can buy, that I, that I can buy at a bookstore. I know I may be a minority in this opinion because a lot of people place high stock in autographed books, which is why I'm making this video. I first started thinking about this like a long time ago when I was a little kid because I was gifted a children's book that was signed by the author of the children's book. I think it was the book Yeah Toast. Uh, so this, <laughs> this was a fun book. I liked the rhymes and everything, but it was not one of my favorite books. I did not uh, read it over and over again. Um, so when it was presented to me as, ooh, a signed copy, I thought to myself as a little kid, why is that special? I don't know. <laughs> and I've sort of carried that with me throughout my entire life. <sighs> what is so special about a signed book? Again, I know why it is special to some people. This book has been actually held by the author, by the creator of said book. The creator has bestowed upon this book their signature, their acknowledgement of this book's existence. I made this, I sign it, I hand it off to the world. <laughs> My point in making this video is that I do have a small collection of signed books that are very special to me, but it, it is because I got them signed in person. And it is more about the, the experience and the story behind the book and the autograph than the autograph itself. In thinking about this video, I was worried that I'd come across as a little bit of a, a snob or like bragging, like, ooh, I got to meet all these authors, like, look at how special I am but that is really not my intention. It is just like these books are part of my collection. I'm obviously a collector of books. You know, this is what I choose to dedicate part of my paycheck to. And part of that collection is a small collection of autographed books that are very special to me. The first book that I'm going to talk about is The Outlier. It is actually not a book that I got signed in person. I ordered it off the internet. And that is the paperback edition of Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. So as soon as I saw this cover released, this cover teased online, I was like, I'm buying that, even though I already have the hardcover of Carry On. I just love this book so much. I love Rainbow Rowell and this cover is amazing. I just love it. The purple and the... Ugh. But anyway, I'm talking about signed books in this video and this book is signed. Rainbow Rowell's Twitter is the only Twitter that I follow. I don't even have a Twitter. It's just every couple of days I will look on Rainbow Rowell's Twitter and like catch up with her posts because she is most active on Twitter out of her social media and I love it so much. But anyway, she announced that if you ordered uh, this book from her local bookstore, she would go and sign all of the pre-orders. So I had to do that <laughs> because I knew I was going to buy this book anyway. And since she 
like offered to sign all those books if you ordered it from this particular bookstore. It was kind of a no-brainer for me. I had to do that. So it is signed by Rainbow Rowell, and it says, Paulina, use your words, Rainbow. <laughs> and when this came in the mail, I was so jacked. I was so excited because I love Rainbow Rowell, and she wrote in there, use your words, with it, which is, I think she writes that all the time. I'm not. Ah. Uh, but I am a copywriter. I write for a living. So it just felt like it fit so much. <laughs> uh, so, so that is the story behind this one. Now we're going to move on to all the books that I got signed in person chronologically. The very first book that I got signed in person was Stealing Buddha's Dinner, a memoir by Bit Min Nguyen. And this is a memoir about a Vietnamese immigrant that came over to the United States when she was very young and her family ended up settling in West Michigan. Every year, my university that I went to in West Michigan um, would set a community read book. So they would set a book like over the summer so you could read it over the summer and come back and they would have like some sort of event surrounding the book that everybody was supposed to read for the community read. And this was the book um, maybe my sophomore year? I don't remember. And I went to the event that they had on campus and they had the author come. And it was very appropriate because her book is set in West Michigan. She immigrated to West Michigan and our university was in West Michigan. So it made a lot of sense. And this memoir is talking about her immigrant experience through the lens of food. I found it very enjoyable. I really liked it and actually also relatable because my mom's side of the family is all from Italy. They, my great grandparents all immigrated from Italy to the Detroit area. And one cultural thing that has held over to my generation, so my great grandparents down to me, is the food. I don't know the language. I've never been to Italy, but Italian food is what I grew up on and with. So I understood that part of this memoir when, um, you know, you're in this American society and like what your family eats is so much different from what all your friends eat. And it sort of like makes you an other when you come to school with like a meatball sandwich and everybody else is eating like, you know, sugar garbage that they got from the grocery store. <laughs> But it's like, I didn't understand that when I was a kid, I wanted to eat what everybody else was eating. And only as I grew up did I realize like, no, you want to eat like the good homemade stuff that comes from your culture because it's yummy. Uh, but anyway, I was actually pretty nervous when I like walked up to get this signed by the author because it was the first time I had ever met an author in person and got to discuss their work with them. And that just sort of blew my mind a little bit. Uh, but she wrote inside, she was so nice. She was like incredibly nice. Um, and it was a wonderful experience to be able to hear her do a reading and to um, get my book signed. Oh, and she dated it. So that's really nice. So it was September 18th, 2008. So it was my freshman year. Okay. Uh, and it, she says, for Paulina, with all best wishes, happy vegetarian question mark eating. She wrote that because in college I did not eat meat. Um, and I talked to her a little bit about that. And she was just like, that's, you know, I respect that. But why would you ever do that? <laughs> Which I'm not a vegetarian now. I was a vegetarian in college. Well, pescetarian, I ate fish, but that's a whole other story. It doesn't matter. Anyway, it was a wonderful experience meeting her. I recommend this memoir if any of that sounded really interesting to you. Um, it's a really good memoir. The author is lovely. So if you want to support her. And I just love this cover because it's got food on it. Treats. Um, and I love the contrast between the colors and the, the black background. It's really nice, but it's smudged a little bit. This is one of those dust jackets that smudges. Ugh, I hate those. The next one I want to talk about was actually like a surprise that I got to get it signed because it was not planned at all. And that is Point Your Face at This, Drawings by Dimitri Martin. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is. It's just funny drawings by the comedian Dimitri Martin. Dimitri Martin is my favorite stand-up comedian. I just love his like innocent humor. It's just so cute and funny. And so like he is, he is cute and funny and his stand up is cute and funny. I went to go see uh, Dimitri Martin do stand up. This was actually the third time I got to see him live. I did not know that they were doing this, but after the show, 
uh, they announced, the theater announced that you could go into the lobby and buy copies of his book. So I'm like, I want to do that. Uh, so we went into the lobby to buy copies of his book. And then they said when we bought the copy that if we wanted to stick around, Dimitri Martin was going to come out and sign the books. And I didn't know this was going to happen until they told us. So I'm like, of course we're staying to get the book signed. And he was the sweetest person. I was, again, kind of nervous to talk to him because, you know, I've followed his career for a while. And it's just like, now I get to, like, talk to him in person. I get to, like, see him and, like, give him a hug because he gave me a hug. And it was great. Um, so I told him, I was like, I've seen you every time you've come to town. You know, I saw you like two years ago when you came to town and he's like, oh, well, how have you been in that time since we last met? And I was like, you're so cool. I love you so much. So he wrote inside, let me find it. Paulina, hello. And a little drawing of himself <laughs> with his most distinguishing feature, his big nose doodle and then some sort of i guess that's his signature at the bottom it just looks like a bunch of squiggles to me but yes there it is i love it <laughs> so the next one i'm going to talk about actually required the most effort to do and that was when i went to new york to get Neil Gaiman to sign The Ocean at the End of the Lane and, and also the Graveyard Book. Uh, but it was specifically a tour for the release of Ocean at the End of the Lane. Neil Gaiman announced that he, for the release of this book, was doing the last American book signing tour. And I'm like, oh, the last one in the States. I have to go. I have to go. And I looked it up and he was doing an event in Michigan that's really close to me. But unfortunately, I had to go to a wedding that day. So I, <laughs> so I could not go and get my book signed where it was convenient for me. But luckily, I have a friend that lives in New York, Peter. Hi, Peter. And I called him up and I was like, can me and Timmy stay in your apartment for like 36 hours? and go see Neil Gaiman. And Peter was like, yes, and also I'm coming with you to the book signing. So <laughs> I booked plane tickets like immediately. Timmy and I flew to New York seriously for like 36 hours. And it's the first and only time I've ever been to New York. And you know, Peter showed us around like a whirlwind sort of like quick tour of New York. Um, like not even a tour, just like a couple of spots that we could get in. And uh, then we went to the book signing in Brooklyn. It was a it was a theater in Brooklyn. Amanda Palmer was there. Amanda Palmer, Neil Gaiman's wife, actually made like a surprise appearance, and she played some songs for us before Neil Gaiman came out and did a reading of the Ocean at the End of the Lane. If you, and if you have ever heard Neil Gaiman's reading voice. It's amazing. He is the best narrator voice. The day of the book signing, we were sort of hopping around uh, New York because the book signing was in the evening and we found out through an email or something, I forget what it was, but they announced that you could actually get two books signed by the author when you came to the event. And I did not know that. <laughs> So the, the ticket came with um, a copy of Ocean at the End of the Lane, and then you could get a second book signed that you brought um, with you. And I didn't have any of my copies of other books by him with me, so we went to the Strand Bookstore, which was amazing, and I would love to go back to New York pretty much just to go to the bookstore and like eat food. and. Anyway, I scoured the shelves for another Neil Gaiman book, and they had the Graveyard book. I would have liked to have maybe one of my more favorite books, like Coraline or American God signed, but hey, whatever. I, I was in a particular situation, and this is what they had at the Strand, so I ended up getting this. And you could have one personalized and one just signed, I believe, that I remember. Let me look at this really quick. Yeah, so I chose to have The Ocean at the End of the Lane just signed, and then I chose to have the Graveyard book personalized. Oh yeah, look, here's the, the bookmark from The Strand in there. <laughs> yep, there we go. We have my name, Paulina, on a headstone that Neil Gaiman drew 
and his signature there. And he did this in, like, the most fancy fountain pen. Like, he had the fanciest fountain pen to sign his books. And it was just a wonderful experience because I got to go to New York and explore a new city for a little bit and visit with my friend Peter and also his sister Kate because she met us up later to go to the book signing. And the event was wonderful and Neil Gaiman was so nice. And I say this because not only was he gracious signing the books, but he also waited like a long time. So this was a packed Brooklyn theater. I forget which theater it was in Brooklyn, but it was like an older theater. And me and my friends were in, oh, my friends and I were in the first, like first couple of rows in the balcony. So by the time that we got out of the balcony and down and around into the line to wait for Neil Gaiman signing. We were like some of the last people in line and the line just snaked all the way around the city block. And we had to wait like for hours in line. But that also means that Neil Gaiman had to sign books and like greet people for hours. And I don't know how you have the energy to do that. I certainly would not have <laughs> the energy to do that. Um, and, like, he didn't have to stay that long. He could have said, like, I'm cutting it off at, like, 10 o'clock or whatever. But, no, he stayed until, like, midnight to make sure that everybody got their book signed. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, I will treasure these forever and also treasure the memories. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> And then the last one that I have is a very recent acquisition, and that is Sourdough by Robin Sloan. I've actually talked about this in a recent video because, like I said, it was just a few months ago, and this uh, came in one of my first Book of the Month Club boxes for September that I ever bought for myself. And it was also my first pick for my work book club, so I read it as a group. And then I saw that Robin Sloan was doing an event at a local bookstore, um, Literati, in Ann Arbor, and it's one of my favorite bookstores in the world because it's just so quaint and lovely. I love it. I told one of my coworkers about it because Robin Sloan is her favorite author. She um, loves Mr. Penumbra's 24 Hour Bookstore. That's one of her favorite books. So I'm like, okay, you have to go to this event with me. I'm going anyway, but you should come with me. And we went and it was lovely. And I talked about this a little bit in a previous video when I did a reading wrap up for that month and talked about this book. But if you have not watched that, Robin Sloan is one of the most interesting people that I have met <laughs> because he just thinks of all these super cool things and what he finds cool, I also find cool, you know. And if, if you've read his books or follow him on social media at all, then you'll know like what's so cool about him. I have a hard time explaining what it is. So it's like, you know, underground food markets and like, uh, trunk wines, you know, which look up trunk wines or trunk grape vines or whatever and you'll know what that is. Um, and like the things that he puts in his books, like puzzles and language and just, mm, ah. And uh, recently he did a, uh, on a Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, he did a live YouTube reading of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight and I sat with my mom and Timmy to like listen to that and it was just like the most amazing experience. I loved it. Anyway, I'm talking about the signed book. Okay, so the signed book went to the signing and we sat in the front row, sat in the front row and he did a little reading of this and he explained like, you know, the things that he's into and what sparks ideas for projects and he took the time to answer our questions. It was a pretty small reading, maybe, Oh, less than a hundred people were there because it's a small space and um, everybody was asking like such interesting intelligent questions and he had great answers to them and he just seemed like a really cool guy and then when I went to go um, get the book signed by him oh I also got Mr. Penumbra signed I'll go fetch it hang on <laughs> Because I had a copy of both of these, so yeah, I got them both signed. Oh, I got really confused for a second. Uh, I got them both signed. I got really confused for a second because it says happy birthday in there, and I was like, it was not my birthday. Why did he write that? But that's because my friend Melanie bought this for me, and she wrote happy birthday, enjoy the 24-hour bookstore while you are 24, smiley face, heart, Melanie. Also, this book has, like, a secret to it, so... If you own a copy of this book, you will know what that secret is. 
to this cover. This cover has a secret, and it's amazing. Uh, but anyway, I got these books signed by Robin Sloan, and we took pictures, and he was very gracious and nice and wonderful. And he does this super cool thing. Let me find it. Where is it? He does this super cool, super cool thing that just blew my freaking mind. That when he signs books at a reading, when he actually gets to meet the people, um, he does this extra thing that he would not do if he just signed a bunch of books for a bookstore to sell. And that is, he has a stamp specifically made for him that is um, the coordinates. So he can dial in the coordinates of where you are when you get the book signed. And for him, that makes it like special. Like he's marking this moment in time with exactly like where you were when you got the book signed and it blew my fucking mind. Oh my God. Like that is exactly the kind of stuff that I just love. I adore. And that is why Robin Sloan is so cool. It's because he does stuff like this. He wrote for Paulina, that's me, exclamation point, underline, underline, with the coordinate stamp on there. And this is for the bookstore Literati in Ann Arbor. If you're ever in Ann Arbor, stop into Literati. And actually all of the bookstores, Ann Arbor have sort of like a weird glut of bookstores because it's a college town so there's lots of different bookstores to go see and he signed this one as well pretty sure it is the same situation here yeah so again oh he didn't underline my name in this one but for paulina exclamation point with his signature and the coordinates and i love it oh yeah and there's a map in here i just love that because this book is just sent in San Francisco and it's got a map in it. I love it. Him doing that and having that coordinate stamp and me going to go see that author and get my book signed sort of started like this idea. It refreshed this idea in my mind and I'm like, I should do a video about signed books, why they are special, why a particular set of signed books is special to me. And I realized it's because these books come with stories. Each one of these has a story behind it. And when I look at this book and when I look at the signature, I get to remember that experience that I had. And that just, uh, I just love it. I just love it. And when I get so excited that I don't know what else to say about a thing I say, I just love it. So there you go. <laughs> So there you have it, my entire signed book collection um, and the stories behind the signed books and all my thoughts on autographed copies of books. <laughs> if you have a signed book collection, let me know what you have. Uh, what authors have you met and talked to? What authors would you like to meet? Who is your dream author to meet and get a book signed? Uh, I would really like to know that. So let me know all your thoughts down in the comments. Um, thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, I upload a new bookish video every Wednesday, so stay tuned for more from me. Um, check out my social media in the description below, and I will see you in my next video. It was um, September, maybe? Uh, September or October? And that is October. Oh my god. It was in October, and the book is sourdough. Okay, I think that'll be my blooper for this uh, video. Anyway, uh, let's try that again.